Good afternoon to you viewers and subscribers and welcome to another video and in this week's video I am going to be presenting to you the slum test. Now I want to point out to you that there are three important tests that should be conducted before you pour your concrete on site. There is a slum test, the air test and the temperature test. Now it is quite important that even though you have purchased your concrete from the concrete plant, you must still, on arrival of, the, of that concrete unit, to have these tests done to verify if the concrete that is coming from the concrete plant is good enough to pour your structure. So without further ado, let's get right into the video where I'm going to be presenting to you the procedure of how to carry out your slum test. Thank you. Welcome to the presentation for the slum test where I'm going to be highlighting to you how you can carry out your slum test on your construction site. The slum test is governed by ASTM C143 slash C143M and the meaning for the acronym ASTM is the American Standard for Testing Material and this is the standard test method for slum of hydraulic cement concrete. The purpose of the slum is to determine the consistency of the concrete. The consistency of the concrete is the measure of the relative fluidity or mobility of the concrete. In other words, how the concrete flow and how mobile the concrete is. The slum does not measure the water content or the workability of the concrete. So what that means is that you cannot carry out your slum test simply because you want to know if the amount of water that you put into your mix design is adequate for the concrete and conversely the workability you do not carry out your slum test to determine the workability solely the slum test is merely done to determine the consistency of the concrete now i want to point out to you that yes in fact that the consistency of the concrete do impact the workability of the concrete. So I want to point out that, right? So while it is true that an increase or decrease in the water content will cause a corresponding increase or decrease of the concrete slump, providing that all of the other materials and conditions are constant. So yes, you can put in a certain amount of water right and you might think that you know you put in amount certain amount of water or you you know reduce the certain amount you reduce the amount of water that goes into the concrete mix that is going to affect the slump no because the slump is affected by all the components or all the ingredients that goes into the concrete mix so therefore it is not solely one component chiefly the water that determines if your slump is good or your slump is bad. The amount of sun and the type of sun that you use can determine the slump. The amount of coarse aggregates and the type of coarse aggregates can determine the type of slump. The amount of water, yes, the amount of water, whether it is too much water or the lot they have, can affect your slump and even the amount of admixtures that is added to the concrete mix can affect your slum. So cumulatively, all the components that goes into the concrete mix can directly affect your slum. Also, the water content may increase or decrease without any apparent change in the slum. So just as I've mentioned to you before, you can decrease the amount of water or you can increase the amount of water in your concrete mix design and yet still your slump remain the same. Factors such as aggregate properties or grading of the aggregate, the mixed proportion, 
the air content, the concrete temperature, or use of special admixtures can influence the slump of the concrete. So as I mentioned to you before, all the components that goes into the concrete mix can directly affect your slump. Or conversely, can result in the change in water content requirement for maintaining a given slum. So yes, you can alter your concrete mix by adding or removing water and the slum can remain the same because everything that goes into the mix can directly affect your slum. So for example, an over sanded mix may require more mixing water than originally designed mix proportion that was needed. But the slump may remain the same. Therefore, you cannot assume that the water cement ratio is being maintained simply because the slump is within the specification limit. So yes, when you have carried out your slump test, even though you may get or you may arrive at a slump that is within the specification, you cannot you know, determine that yes, the because the the slum is within the specific specified limits that everything is good with your concrete mix right and it does not mean that if your concrete has in having more sun than what is needed and you you adjust the water based on the, the increase of sun you increase the water based on the fact that you increase the sun that your slump is going to come back to what it is supposed to be according to specification. So that is it for the slum test in relation to the aggregates. The aggregates that goes into the concrete mix directly affects your slum. So it's not only one thing. You know, a lot of people might just think that, you know, when you carry out your slum test, if it fails, is a lack of water or it, you know, the concrete mix having too much water. No, all the aggregates that goes, all the components that goes into your concrete mix directly affect your slum. The procedure of how to carry out the slum test on the construction site. If you look to the left, the upper left of the screen, you will observe the different apparatus that are used to carry out the slum test on site. There is the slum cone, there is the scoop, there is a tamping rod, and there is a tape measure. Now, the first step in carrying out the slum test is that you're going to dampen or you're going to wet the inner surface of the slum cone. Second, you're going to place the slum cone on a rigid, flat, level, moist, non-absorbent surface, free of vibration, and large enough to contain all the slumps concrete. The third thing is you're going to use a scoop to take up a portion of the concrete and place in the slump cone to about one third of the height of the slump cone. So you're going to take up the concrete using the, the, the scoop and you're going to place the concrete in the slump cone to one third of the height of the cone. You're going to use the tamping rod to run 25 times throughout the depths with the rounded end of the tamping rod. So if you observe the tamping rod, you will observe that one end is much smaller than the other. So you're going to use just the bigger end or the end that is rounded. You're going to uniformly distribute the running over the cross section of the layer. So what that means is that while you are running, you must ensure that you do not only tamp one section of the concrete inside the slum cone. You're going to ensure that you, you run all over the surface of the concrete throughout that depth. Secondly, you're going to use this scoop again. You're going to take up the concrete and you're going to place inside the cylinder cone and you're going to fill the cylinder to two thirds of the height. So you're going to use now the tamping rod. You're going to tamp another 25 times and you're going to ensure 
that you thump all over the cross section of the concrete. But one thing you must ensure to do, and this is very, very critical, you must ensure that you rod or thump through the second layer of the concrete and you're only going to penetrate the first layer by only one inch. You're going to thump all the way through the second layer, but you're going to penetrate the first layer only by one inch. So you must not rod all the way through the second layer, all the way through down to the bottom of the first layer. You must only penetrate the first layer by one inch. You're going to repeat that for the third layer. You're going to fill the cone all the way to the top with concrete. You're going to rod another 25 times. And again, you're going to ensure that you rod all over the cross-sectional area of the concrete. You're not only going to rod one or thump one portion. And you're going to ensure now that you're going to rod only one inch into the second layer. So the third layer, you're going to rod all the way through the third layer, but one inch into the second layer. After that is done, after you rod that 25 times, you're going to strike off the excess concrete on the top of the cone by using the tamping rod or the 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 cone is, the, the scoop itself, but it's preferable you can use the the um the tamping rod. So you're going to screed off the excess concrete on the top of the cone by by rolling it by a rolling motion over the cone to ex to ensure that the concrete is level to the surface of the cone then while maintaining a downward pressure you're going to remove any concrete which is collected around the base of the cone during the striking off or the screening then you're going to remove the cone by lifting it steadily in a vertical direction and while you're lifting it in a vertical direction you must ensure that there are no lateral movements and there are no twisting of the cone while lifting the cone in a vertical direction because you do not want to shift the concrete inside the cone and that is going to allow the concrete to fall and it's going to affect the reading of your slum. So after that is done, you're going to immediately measure the slump, right? So this and the slump, this is the vertical distance between the top of the cone and the display center of the top surface of the concrete specimen. So if you look at the right of your screen, this is how you're going to measure the slump. If you look, you can see the concrete specimen below and you can see the rod above and you're going to measure the distance between the top of the rod or the, the top of the cone and the display center of the concrete and that is going to give you your slump. Now, ideally, you will want to get a slump between 4 to 6 inches or 100 millimeter to 150 millimeter. If you carry up the slump and you're not getting that reading, it is best that you use a different concrete sample and you you carry out the slump test again and if the reading is the same that means something is wrong with the concrete mix the concrete is not consistent enough to be placed in your structure so in the case if you order the concrete from the concrete factory or the concrete plants you will want to alert them that the slump test has failed Ensure to let them know that you have carried out the slum test twice and you have gotten the same results and they would have to take remedial action to dispatch another unit of concrete and you repeat the slum until you have gotten a slum which is in specification. Also to note that if a falling away or shearing off of the concrete occurs, disregard the test and do another test with a different sample of concrete because Sometimes when you carry out the slump test, when you lift the cone, the concrete does fall or shear to the side. If that happen, immediately disregard that, 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 that concrete. Do not bother to check the slump. 
just do another slump and if the same thing happen then you will have to reach out to the concrete plant to let them know that something is wrong with the concrete and you cannot carry out the slump test because the concrete is not steady enough for you to carry out that 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 slump test if in the event that you mix the concrete on site and you're running into the same problems it is best to do over a mix and ensure that when you do your mix you do the proper mix proportion and if you have done the mix correctly and if you add if you have added the right amount of water then more than likely you're going to get a correct slump so that is it for this video if you like the video hit the like button remember to share the video if you're watching the video on my channel for the first time make sure you subscribe and i will see you in another video upload thanks